October Red Boxing with the gentleman, Chris Billum Smith. Welcome, first time guests, and I always get happy about those. Amazing. Oh, this is what happened. Oh. Start again. Yeah. No, uh, you know what? I never edit anything out. It stays as it is. A bit loose. <laughs> right, a bit, of, a bit of camera mishaps there. October Red Boxing with the gentleman, Chris Billum Smith. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. I tell you what, you are a hard man to get hold of. I've been trying to catch up with you. I think, I'm sure it's from when you fought Isaac Chamberlain and it just never happened. But we are here and I'm grateful to have you on. It's good to be on and uh, yeah, apologies, it's taken so long. I think your missus was due to have the baby then or was it the fight before? I might have been trying to get you for a while actually. Uh, Manchester, she was seven, uh, eight months pregnant. So Tommy McCarthy too, so yeah, probably yes. that one. Yes, that was it, it was your last fight that you had with Matchroom. So we can start on there, we can talk about the crossover, you making the decisions that are right for your career and then the fight that you do have is in your hometown on the sunny beaches of Bournemouth. Yeah, you know, that was the, the, the deal breaker in that sense. You know, I don't think the zone wanted to do a show down here. I think Matchroom would have, but obviously their broadcasters call the shots um, and Boxer and, and, and uh, Sky were happy to put me on down here. So uh, we ended up here in, in, in July and we're, we're back here again. And so I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. It's amazing. And it's something that you wanted to do for such a long time. And then you get two shows in your hometown. What, in six months apart? Six months apart? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, we were end of July and now here we are uh, mid-December. Mid so, yeah, very lucky um, to, uh, you know, have the opportunity, but also very grateful to my fans who made it unbelievable last time and that's why we're back here. Yeah, we saw them here cheering when you was on the scales and obviously when you got off the scales, we could see Chris is really popular because he was to in and fro in, speaking to people in the crowd that came to support him. Talk to us about that support and how important it is for you to have all of that around you. Yeah, I'm, like I said, very, very lucky. It's uh, very important to me. You don't get the, the shows in your hometown without that sort of support. So, um, you know, Bournemouth hasn't had any live boxing, um, you know, televised big shows ever, I don't think. So July was the first one. We're back here. There's a lot of boxing fans down here and the support, you know, a very good community down here. So everyone supports their own. Um, so I'm very, very grateful for, to, to all my fans um, and they, they make an absolute racket on the night as well. So that's a, a huge, <laughs> huge bonus. I remember literally you would have thought there was like hundreds of thousands in that hall. Uh, well, this hall, actually, you could hear them cheering from the time you walked out and all the way through the fight. It was like a concert. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. You know, I didn't hear them until I left my change room. And just before Isaac's ring walk, you know, I could hear him. I was like, whoa, that's loud. And then when I got out there, it was crazy. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so, so buzzing to, to experience that again Saturday. That you are nicknamed the gentleman, but what I will say is that you're quite a dangerous fighter. We saw what you did to Tommy McCarthy. I was there, I sat ringside for that. Describe your style, because I'm going to say that you're quite brutal. You want to get inside and really hurt someone. And you've got this ability, and like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, to change the fight, to make it your fight. Talk to us about your style. Yeah, you know, I mean, as an amateur, I was very much an in-and-out fighter and I'd done, like, one stoppage in 40-odd in fights. So, um, yeah, Shane's developed my inside game amazing. I've learned more about the pro game. It's, you know, it's an entertainment business. People want to see entertaining fights. There's plenty of good fighters that are winning out there that haven't got a fan base like mine or people don't like watching them. So I'm very grateful um, to, to, to support, but that's down to my style as well. So, um, yeah, it's a, an exciting style and, yeah, I like, like to have a tear-up sometimes a bit too much. Um, and we're, ref we're in the gym, we're refining that and, you know, and touching, clearing, cleaning things up a little bit and making, you know, not just walking onto shots to, to get, taking one to give two. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, but it's a big part of my game, the, the physicality and the, and the pace I set. We talk about that and, uh, and please forgive my ignorance, but how long have you been trained by Shane now? How long have you been in his gym? Uh, five and a half years since I turned pro, so five and a half years. You've always had him? Yeah, as a pro from my pro debut, which was down here at a small hall venue. Um, I've trained with Shane, very lucky to be trained by Shane and have such a great coach, obviously. Proven time and time again how great a coach he is, and uh, I'm definitely a product of, of that. So you were probably one of the original fighters that he had, so you've grown with him and, and saw the stable grow. How is that in the gym? Because obviously you've got the likes of Hassan, Adam Azim, you've got the wonderful Caroline Dubois. I know you've got, um, what's the female fight? Ellie, Ellie Scottney yeah. as well. 
So it's a gym that's thriving full of fighters. What is it like in there? What's the atmosphere like? Yeah, it's brilliant. You know, we've got a real good group. And at the moment, you know, there's, I was I was once the, the newcomer, you know, before, um, we had when I joined there was Josh Taylor, Carl Frampton, George Groves and, and all that lot. So I was very much uh, the bottom of the pecking order um, and the least experienced. And now I'm one of the most experienced in the gym. Obviously got Daniel in there as well, who's, who's re well experienced. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's a great gym to be in, and I'm, I'm loving to what you know being part and watching their careers and watching them grow. And now and again, you know, hand a bit of advice where 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 they ask for it. So uh, that's nice as well. I was going to ask because you've been obviously you've been with Shane since you, since you turned pro, so that's five and a half years. Having that trust and confidence in your trainer to carry you all the way through your career and not train a half, what does that mean to you, Chris? Yeah, loyalty is a big thing for me, you know. But I, if if it wasn't working for me, also you know you got to be loyal to yourself and make sure it's working. But it's a it's a match made in heaven, really. Me and Shane. Um, we get on really well. We're really, really good friends. You know, we're not just a coach and a fighter. We've definitely got a great friendship relationship outside the uh, outside the ring. Both recently become dads as well, so we're very much similar age, very much in the in the same boat in that sense. Um, but then, you know, the working relationship is great as well, and I, I think that's just been sort of shown throughout my career um, and how how good a relationship it's been. And we talk about developments and it's sort of like you obviously come over to Sky Sports Boxer and it's almost like I said, it's sort of like a clean slate as it, as it were. You've come off wins. Um, the last fight was McCarthy. Then you had Isaac Chamberlain and it's sort of like you're on a trajectory with them. They're really pushing you. And we're going to talk about the fight that you did have. The only loss on the record is against Richard Riatport, who's also part of the Sky Sports Boxer stable. A fight that may be built. I know you've done a couple of interviews and spoken about it, but your thoughts on that fight, two British cruiserweights going at it again, you know, for that rematch? Yeah, that'd be amazing. You know, if if, if I can win a world title and he wins a world title, then how big is that fight? It's huge. People love a domestic rivalry, um, in, in, you know, especially over here in Britain. Um, we absolutely love it. So if we can get a unification for, you know, you look at like Frampton Quigg, how big that was. You know, the fight didn't live up to the hype in the end, but um, I can promise you I'll, I'll make it an entertaining fight while it lasts when, when that rematch happens, especially if we, you know, for, for two world titles. You know, when you look back and you think, OK, you lost that fight. It was, it was, was it point? It was points, yeah, wasn't split it? Decision. Yeah, split decision. When you look at that fighter you were then compared to the fighter you are now, see you smiling. Talk to me about those developments and why you're confident that this time it will be a different fight. I mean, that was my first 50-50 fight, you know, my first step up, really. Um, I learned so much in that fight and gained a lot of experience. Didn't know how to manage the 10 rounds. I'd only done eight before. So you've got all those, all those little things, which is, all comes down to experience, um, which helped me massively since my career. I'm very grateful for that fight. Um, but since then, you know, I've shown my developments. Um, I've grown into the weight even more. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm bigger at the weight. I'm stronger at the weight. Richard's improved in areas as well. You know, he's cleaned up his work. He's not as raw as he once was. So I just think he makes for a fantastic fight. But um, I'm, you know, 100% confident in myself for that fight. We like it, but we're going to go to Saturday. We're going to finish off. I'm, I can feel the eyes boring in the back of my neck for me to hurry up. So we go to Saturday. We talk about this opponent. Let us know a little bit about him. And what I will ask is what do you see as his strengths? I always say the same thing. Weaknesses, yeah, whatever. But what are his strengths? Because you've got the ability, and I said it to you before, to make the fight your fight. You control it. What do you see as his attributes that you want to take away from him? Well, he likes to come forward. He likes to press the pace. He likes to let his hands go. He's got quick hands. He's got a really good quick right hand. You know, he throws it straight. He can wing it over the top as well. Um, he's got a lot of strengths in that, you know. So I may have to adjust and adapt slightly to not give him a chance to fight his fight. Um, make a few adjustments, fight, you know, in, in the inside when I need to, but also, you know, walk him onto shots and, and, and stay, keep it tidy because he's going to come in and try and rough me up and look to land that big right hand. Um, and like I said, he's got quick hands. You can't, as soon as you give him a target, he'll throw three or four shots at it and, and he's thick, wide. So, yeah, he's a, he's a dangerous fight and not people, many people know him. So sort of in a, a no-win situation, if I knock him out and around, everyone's go, who was he? Um, but look, it's all about getting the win, but performing and looking good doing so. Um, and I think he'll, he'll bring out the best of me. So finally then, you get through this fight because we like to be confident about this. But people that we speak to, you get through this fight. What do you see in 2023 for Chris, the gentleman, Billam Smith? 
see a world title fight at, at Dean Court, you know, FC Bournemouth Stadium, now called the Vitality Stadium, but um, we, we call it Dean Court, us old, old school fans. Um, so yeah, we're uh, world title fight there uh, in the early summer, end of May, early June, um, and then I've become world champion. We look forward to seeing it. All the best on Saturday night. Thank you so much for waiting, taking the time to speak to October Red Boxing, uh, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. Hi, and thank you for watching October Red Boxing. Like, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications. You can also find us on Instagram at October Red Boxing and on Twitter, October Red UK. And remember, at October Red, we stay ready.